One of the beautiful things about this hobby is the fact that there's always a game for everyone out there. Um, if you like sci-fi, if you like horror, if you like fantasy, and even if you like western, for me, this is what this video is going to be about. I grew up in Texas, uh, I grew up a lot in the whole cowboy aspect of the culture of life, around farms and animals and riding horses, and um, I finally got to go back home, and as was at home back home in Texas, I saw a lot of videos on YouTube and a lot of people were recommending a game by War Cradle called Wild West Exodus. And uh, when I got back home to my current country of France, um, I decided to order them and give them a shot. So this is going to be my video of kind of reviewing them and as well as showing you some more personalized uh, from my part of painting because like I said I grew up in this so once I bought these and got them on my hands I had a lot of ideas of how to paint these so hopefully y'all like it when I got to see uh, my home country in my home state of Texas. It was quite amazing. Uh, I really did miss it a lot and now when I came back and I had these boxes in my hand, I thought about those days and I thought about everything that I saw when I went to go see the Grand Canyon, when I saw the mesas in West Texas, when I saw the canyons in West Texas. Um, I thought a lot about the environment and I, I uh, quickly got a lot of painting ideas of how I wanted to do it, how I wanted to base them and things like that. And obviously, as any other thing before anything I do, I like to read about the lore. That is something that I love about tabletop gaming. Um, I really love to play, but my thing uh, that I like to focus a lot about is the lore and the painting because that's the side of the hobby that I like. Like I said, there's always a thing for everyone in this hobby and that's the beautiful thing a lot of people love the gaming aspects people love the painting aspects other people love the lore for me I really love the lore and the painting and once you read about the lore uh, it is quite amazing because uh, it's an alternate reality basically where the United States and basically the whole world has learned about an alien technology and from the 1800s they quickly advanced into more of a steampunk kind of thing something that they shouldn't have been um, and like I said uh, since this is more dear to my heart it in basically War Cradle uses a lot of Americana kind of stuff basically the everything is set up in the 1800s so it's basically right after the Civil War as we would know it in real life, but in in their world, it was more uh, chaotic because it was it involved alien weaponry and uh, the factions that it decided to uh, basically order upon were the Enlightened and the Order, which uh, basically the Enlightened are the ones who started everything and kicked off the entire. Uh, basically the uh, Wild West Exodus kind of world because um, they were the ones who actually founded the alien uh, technology which to this day we don't know what it where it came from uh, my suspicion that it's from the order but we don't know once they found it they decided that it was going to be their responsibility to kind of lead the world into their own worldview and they wanted to control everything but like any other uh, tabletop game you have also the aspect of the evil side and you have the hex which is basically what the evil uh, I guess uh, people would be called uh, the evil faction of the game are called are basically the hex and it's basically once you read the lore it, it makes it seem as if the Hex is not really evil, it's just that humanity decided to corrupt the Hex and they use it in the wrong way. And once the, the Hex 
and the people the, of the enlightened decided to use uh, whatever technologies they found for evil things they felt like they were influenced by the hex they basically kicked off this kind of more n- n- nuclear kind of kind of war but not really and like it's just a metaphor it's just that everything just exploded and now just uh, every country in the in this dystopian world um, is basically just up against one another and uh, they're hoping that their technology is gonna get the upper hand on the other factions which basically you have other factions you have um, the Union which is basically the United States uh, as I said since it takes to be after the Civil War you have the Union who is basically still trying to control the northern hemisphere of the United States area and then you have uh, like the outlaws and other factions where you have uh, more like the confederates you know the rebels the outlaws and stuff like that which is pretty interesting but I decided to go for the enlightened because it's something that I like and in their lore it talks a lot about how they are kind of after what they realized and what they did they decided to kind of just back off and just let the world be itself and another reason why I bought this enlightened box um, box set is also because I'm buying off because they're going to release another kind of game based off uh, the Wild West Exodus which is called uh, the Lost World Exodus and I decided to buy this box set just to buy off in that future content that they're going to be releasing because they have another box set which is like an Asian style and that is like super amazing now I'm going to start off by reviewing some of the boxes that I got the Soul Hunters and the Spica Cohort now first of all these are texture boxes so they're pretty great to the touch honestly um, that in itself is already pretty amazing total change of uh, between the other boxes and uh, once you open it it's quite classy uh, I like the green texture of it like a, like a green uh, wood kind of feel um, not really feel but like look to it and plus the logo in the middle it's super classy and if you're not uh, these are resin models uh, the, the soul hunters are resin models so if you are not used to it, uh, there's some certain things that you should do for certain model for resin models, and they come this way. Now resin models tend to be a little bit more uh, fragile, so just be careful when handling them. But honestly, these models are pretty great. Uh, they're highly detailed, uh, and honestly, they're pretty great to work with. Uh, you will be needing some super glue since uh, plastic glue will not going to work, obviously. Um, for the speaker ho- cohorts, the box itself, um, it's a very cool box in itself. It's also textured as well, um, but these are plastic models. Um, they come more in like the traditional uh, kind of Games Workshop kind of sprue if you're used to seeing just uh, Games Workshop. So that's going to be right up your alley if you're not used to buying from any other tabletop uh, gaming. So it's pretty great. Um, they come 10 in a box and so you're gonna have uh, a bunch of, uh, I mean, you cannot customize them in what weapons you can have, but the weapons that they do have, they're pretty great. Um, it comes with a lot of knives, with a lot of guns. So honestly, it's pretty great. So you're gonna have a bunch of, if you're like for me, I'm into the whole Texan stuff, into the whole cowboy stuff. That's why I picked these guys. Um, so honestly, in my mind, I already knew how I was going to paint these guys. And like I said, since uh, the resin models from um, the Soul Hunters, um, you will need to do some certain things. Like for example, I recommend you washing them before you actually put any priming or any paint to them. Wash them, put some a little bit uh, in lukewarm water and some soap, and just uh, brush them out with a with a old brush, and they should be good to go. And honestly, these are super detailed models, the resin models in itself. So they're pretty great. You will be needing some super glue, like I said, so you'll be able to glue some of the parts and maybe some either um, some putty or some uh, green stuff so you can, you know, um, or some liquid stuff so you can just uh, kind of uh, put some in between the gaps that you might gonna end up with, you know, since it's not gonna perfectly seal. Um, for the other ones since they're plastic uh, you will be just you can just use some 
um, plastic glue, so it's fine. For the resin models, and even these on themselves, honestly, the the ed, the um, for when the sprue gets made, you know, you have the little the edges that get uh, on the side. Honestly, they didn't have that much to scrape off, so that's pretty great. They're pretty well made, and like I said, super fine detailed. And uh, once I did my zenithal priming, uh, they took on the paint super well, both of them. I love to do my painting on zenithal priming because it helps me figure it out where the highlighted areas are and the, uh, the shadow areas will be. And also it gives you a rough idea of how you want to paint it. So it really does help a lot. I love to do this all the time for when I paint, even when sometimes I don't even use it. Uh, as a guide but it still it also helps you have some darker colors and some lighter colors in some areas even if you're using the same one so that really does help a lot and like I said super detail models highly recommend them um, honestly loved it and for this video I decided to paint off my uh, speaker cohorts I had already painted one before because I wanted to get the lay of the land and so with this one, I already knew what I was going to do with this one. In my mind's eye, it was just to transfer it to what I was going to paint with. So I like to start off with the lower recess parts areas because that way, when I get to the higher area ones, I make less mistakes by uh, going, um, putting some of the paint on the other area that I put. So I always like to start off on the lower areas that way, um, like I said, later on when I paint uh, the higher raised areas it's much easier and I make less mistakes so I will be going off with a brown color just the, the regular leather brown from Vallejo and painting off his boots um, I'm the kind of painter who got really used to painting one like uh, one specific color at a time uh, so if uh, like in this uh, model I will be painting a lot of leather stuff so I will be painting just the leather part areas and then adding my highlights already uh, that's the kind of stuff I like to do because I don't know I just got used to it since the beginning I know it's not optimal because then if you make a mistake it's much harder to figure out uh, how to fix it but I kind of got used to it not something I recommend but it's uh, how I really got used to painting my model so like I said I will start off by just putting all my leather browns into everywhere where I think my uh, my area so it's gonna be his holster his hat uh, his boots and uh, some of the little straps that he has I will be coloring them in my brown color because you know for me the hat has to be brown so obviously you know I felt like I was painting Woody if you ever seen the Toy Story it's kind of like that in Toy Story 2 when he's painting uh, uh, re, uh, repainting Woody in that scene with the old man so I decided to do his uh, gun holsters and his rifle holster in like a leather color because uh, like I said in my mind I already knew how I was going to paint this model I already knew how um, uh, the colors were gonna look like it was just to transfer that into what I was seeing in my mind and I'm sorry for if some of the scene some of the uh, video is a little bit blurry my camera decided to capture the brand of the of the brush instead of the mini and I did not see that until after I was done painting so I am really sorry if that bothers you <laughs> it was a mistake uh, I would not committed again and I'm very sorry and since I had already finished painting the model it was quite hard to well, redo the video all over again but like I said I was just gonna go off with uh, all my uh, highlights already so I got my cork brown so so I can just lighten up my brown that I had already that way I can uh, already add my highlights it's something that like I said I love to do myself I like to uh, do my highlights already and like I said since I already had the Zenzo priming that kind of helps you a lot to figure out where your where the light source is going to be hitting so where your light areas where your highlights should be and afterwards it's just for you to guess where do you think they're gonna go so for me I decided to already add all my highlights I put it where everywhere that I think the highlight should be going 
even this in his little color area I decided to add just some edge highlighting not too much just a little bit because uh, that area is not so exposed to the Sun so it should be darker than the rest because you know the hat is covering it but obviously the hat I did have to do a lot of uh, highlighting so we can give it that impression that it's a aside from the fact that I'm giving it an impression that it's a used hat um, also uh, to distinguish between the recess areas and the high areas of the hat itself so I was just going through it with my highlights and uh, honestly um, I was quite happy of getting uh, the highlights that I was with uh, this hat in itself and afterwards uh, once the paint is dry since I, like I said I do like to take my time and work in my highlights uh, once I finish with one area, usually the rest of the, the model tends to be already dry. Well, not like 100% dry, but a little bit drier. So it kind of helps me in just adding another layer to it. In other words, afterwards, I go for my brightest color. Um, I don't often use white. Um, it's quite rare that I use white. I do love to use this bone white from Vallejo. And so that is why uh, I decided to mix that with already my light brown color that I had. So I can make it a little bit more brighter because when when you add white to it it brightens a little bit too much and that's not what i wanted here i wanted more of a muted uh, uh highlight so i decided to go for this uh bone white color because uh like i said it's not too bright but it's not too dark so it does liven up the brown that i already had but sadly uh the way my highlights were coming out were still a little bit too strong i i think i added i dose it I dosed my my bone white a little bit too much so since I like to work off in like uh, grids I still had some of my other paint uh, just there and ready so I just went off with it with some some diluted uh, brown and I decided to go with it so I can just have a much easier gradient now for the pants I decided to go for a gray color because that's the one that I decided that I was going to be my color to go for um, like I said, since I already had done my Zenithal uh, know, priming, right? <laughs> that does help a like lot in already having some of the highlights already done, uh, which is a way that a lot of people use it. Uh, if you're not used to doing some glazing, uh, honestly, if you want to just get tabletop ready minis, that's what I recommend for you to do. Um, for me, I use it mainly, like I said, for so it can help me for my, my highlights. Uh, but also it kind of looks a little bit more natural once you do the glazing and then afterwards you just add your highlights You know uh, where you think it should be more highlighted and that's the way I like to use it. So I just placed my glazed uh, Gray all over the the pants areas because that's the only area where I knew it was going to be gray um, I went through it and then I added another layer of it so it can be a little bit more muted but uh, I was already quite happy with how it was coming out. Like I said, uh, the back of the pants were already dark enough. The front of the pants were light enough because li like I said, that zenithal highlighting does help out a lot. But I knew already that I needed to brighten up the pants because as you can see, it looks it's looking great. But I wanted to, those raised areas, those folds in the pants, I wanted to be more distinguishable. So I got my my uh, gray that I had uh, put some glaze on and my bone white, like I said, that's the one, my prefer uh, white that I like to use because it's not too bright. And I decided to just add it where the fold areas are. That way it's going to still look uh, uh, very well blended while standing out because it, since I mixed it with the glazed, um, it's still kind of translucent in a way so it's not too bright and it's not too dark so then I added I mixed it up my light gray with even more bone white so I can have a little even more highlighted areas and I decided to go that for even more higher areas in in less coverage that way uh, I have a nice gradient where it's gonna go from like a bright to a to a medium gray to a darker gray that way it can look like it's a pan it's pants that are being hit by light and that is how i like to work with my highlights it's basically how everyone works right but just explaining how that works and then for 
the poncho, I decided to go for a yellow color. Like a muted yellow color because um, uh, if you ever seen western movies or like me that I've been to Texas, I've seen ponchos and stuff like that and zarapes from Mexico and they use a lot of bright colors and stuff like that and also I decided this way because uh, um, the the west of the the southwest of the United States there's a lot of browns and there's a lot of yellows there's a lot of reds uh, in the environment so I already knew that with the gray with the brown and now with this yellow uh, he had more chances of blending in because that is what I wanted to base off my story of this little guy is that uh, he you know Aside from being part of the order, the guys who are trying to maintain order against the Hex, they're the eternal enemies of the Hex, they also needed to maintain order in the world, so they send these guys and, and they're the ones who are battling most of the time. So they needed to blend it in, and so I added all my highlights to this poncho and it was looking quite great. Now for skin, I'm not very good at skin, I'm still working on the fact how to get skin correctly so when I laid there I laid my Vallejo uh, light skin color it was way too light uh, I honestly thought it was going to be uh, just the right amount of uh, light color that I thought I was gonna go for but in the end it was not so great I'm still learning uh, most of my paintings that I do uh, if you have follow my Instagram I do a lot of uh, alien or like fantasy paintings so I'm not used to doing uh, like human skin so I still have quite a uh, trouble with it so I decided to add some yellows and brown to my little mix of uh, the, the skin color that I got because I also wanted to give it more natural that he's been in the sun and uh, that uh, he has uh, you know his tan and everything I did not want to make him look pale so uh, that is the way I decided to fix him and it looked quite great now I went for the rest of his um, I guess I want to say poncho and like a knee pad and stuff like that and I wanted to unify my colors I did not want to have a bunch of colors everywhere so I just went the knee pad the shoulder pad and the, the little area of uh, the poncho and his holster I decided to paint them in the uh, dark uh, maroon color from Vallejo and uh, honestly I was quite happy with it and like I said, oh, once I'm done with uh, where I think it's gonna go, I like to go off and put on my highlights. And again, using my uh, bone white, I decided to add already my highlights to the raised areas where I, in my mind's eye, I knew where the sun was going to be hitting those areas. Now this one was a little bit more rougher, uh, as you can see on, on the right, is that uh, my highlight was coming out a little bit too... Too bright and so my my gradient was thrown off so I decided to go off with my original dark maroon color uh, I diluted it with water so I can have a more smooth blend of the highlights uh, that way when it's dried up it's going to look a lot better a lot more smooth right now it's looking still a little bit rough but once it dries it should be looking a little bit better uh, but that is how uh, if you did a too much highlight on a color uh, just your original color or the previous color that you had used just diluted with uh, with either glazed medium or water and just uh, put it in between the two colors and that will help out smooth your transition your gradient between your highlight and your previous color black is another color that uh, I'm not so used to working but thankfully I did have that um, glazed uh, gray so I knew already that I could use that gla glazed clay uh, glazed gray so I can use that for a highlight so I went to go off and give it you know that uh, black black leather strip like well, how some military people use um, and painted all those areas black plus his belt and I used my the glazed gray for the highlights because I knew that uh, that was gonna liven up the black color while being still transparent enough for it to be dark enough so it's not gonna look gray it's just gonna look uh, like a brighter black and afterwards I decided to do my uh, the letters the leather straps with a more lighter lighter brown uh, it wasn't the cork brown 
it was just a, a much lighter brown and like I said I like to work on my highlights and I just added my bone white and and I did the highlights on his straps and this is how it's turning out to be and I'm quite amazed as to how this model is taking all the colors now for the rest I decided to do a copper color because uh, I do it's quite common to use like silver and gold and on in the steampunk areas but I was like I'm gonna use the copper color and I did a lot of trial and errors and I came up with these three colors I had shown and honestly I was quite happy with it afterwards I wanted to use a rust uh, uh, like rust oil so it can give it more of a rusty feel but in the end once it dried up I was quite impressed with uh, the little mix up that I came up with and I honestly really liked it and so I used this in a haul his, uh, his shin pad uh, the little strap on his boot and uh, some other straps in the shoulder and stuff like that on the guns and everything I decided to make it uh, copper because uh, uh, in my mind um, maybe in this world uh, he did not have enough uh, he kind of like MacGyvered his way into just getting some of his armor being a uh, copper color and for the rest I decided to inspire myself with uh, the Arizona or New Mexico with the bright colors of turquoise that Native Americans use from over there so I decided to base off that little uh, aesthetic to it now the non-metal metals I'm not used to it either uh, but I was quite happy how this one turned out I'm still getting the hang of it I'm working on that uh, usually I use like uh, like metal colors but this time I wanted to try out my hands on it and I was quite happy with it by using my gray color then uh, line it up with white this time and I was quite happy with it this is how my previous model turned out to be uh, it looks pretty great honestly uh, working with these models uh, it was super super amazing I was quite impressed with the level of detail of these models I really really recommend you getting some of these models if you want to get your hands off in something else that is not Games Workshop honestly I highly recommend you painting some of these models picking up this tabletop game supporting this guy's work creator because they're making amazing models they're so detailed and I will be getting more of these and I will be reviewing some of their other boxes but they're so amazing and when Lost World Exodus uh, gets released or more models for it get announced I will be getting it my next one that I want to get is the uh, Teddy Roosevelt writing of a Lost Raptor and that looks quite epic and like I said uh, once they are dried up this is the next day and the blends look a little bit the, the highlights look a little bit more natural so I honestly I really love those models I highly recommend for you to get some of these if you're interested in something else if you're interested in also the Wild West this is something that I highly recommend they're really fun to paint they're really fun to build as well and it really gets your creative juices flowing by, by having something else a Wild West atmosphere in a steampunk area uh, dystopian area the era is just amazing I honestly love this the lore I will be making some videos about the lore as well because once I was reading about the, the order and the hex and the enlightened I really fell in love with it so I will be making some more videos about that too as well hopefully y'all like this video hopefully y'all give it a thumbs up comment on the uh, comment below and uh, Tell me if you guys are going to be picking this up or if you did, did you like it? Hopefully y'all did. Um, y'all like these models. Uh, just go ahead and let me know uh, what also I should be improving. But remember, not everything is what it seems in the realm of Ulgu. Bye y'all.